Does the keto diet zombify your organs? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to be listening to an up and coming keto practitioner, student, YouTuber, influencer, scientist. Don't want to miss this one. And at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts on what he says. This is a video from Nicholas Norwitz. If you don't know Nick Norwitz yet, please go and subscribe and don't miss out on his videos. So he combines a PhD from Oxford being a medical student at Harvard and reversing his ulcerative colitis from using a keto diet. So this is the, the combination of things which makes a perfect storm of someone who's, you gotta watch, he's gonna change the world. And it, it's great pleasure. I, I've talked to Nick on the phone, I haven't met him personally, but you can just see that he uh, is trying to get the information, correct information, and has a way to scientifically interpret and, and see things as well. So let's see what Nick Norwood says about a paper that said keto was bad. Before we dive into today's video, I want to invite you to my free webinar, Beyond Cholesterol, the two biggest risk factors for cardiovascular disease. If you're confused by cholesterol or feeling pressured by your doctor to take cholesterol medication, this webinar is perfect for you. Discover the crucial facts about why cholesterol isn't the primary concern for cardiovascular disease risk, and learn what you should focus on instead to evaluate and lower your risk. You can sign up below. Over the past week as I record this, there has been a flood of sensational media headlines that ketogenic diets can accelerate organ aging and damage. Here are some quotes from media outlets. Ketogenic diets increase the buildup of zombie-like cells in the heart, kidney, lungs, and brain. And ketogenic diets may accelerate organ aging, raising the risk of conditions like heart disease and cancer. Or senescence in these organs can contribute to systemic inflammation and toxicity. Now these headlines derive from a new publication in Science Advances that found two different ketogenic diets in mice increase markers of senescence or biological aging. But the data aren't so definitive, at least not like the media headlines would have you believe. So very appropriately, initially debunks the headlines. Always be careful about headlines. If you've been watching, you know, always consider the source. If it's a headline that is an abstract at a meeting, a meeting presentation, this is viewed as preliminary research. And, and the headlines, the media people want controversy. So, in fact, for a long time, I tried to keep keto out of the headlines because necessarily you would find, you'd have to find someone who says keto is bad if you say keto is good. That's just the way reporters are trained. So the first thing you need to know is, you know, let's just don't look at the headlines. Of course, you, if you can, you look at the paper. If you can look at the paper, you look at the... Uh, if you look at the paper, you look at the, if you look at the paper, you look at the methods sections, not the introduction, not the conclusion. You look at the methods, if you're trained to do so. Nor are they sufficiently compelling to cause me to start eating potatoes, fruit salads, and oats anytime soon. Now let me tell you why. Welcome to my channel, Stay Curious. I'm gonna start by reading a quote straight from the paper itself. Multiple ketogenic diet studies using murine or mouse models have shown anti-inflammatory effects and improvements in midlife longevity and neurological, metabolic, and obesity phenotypes. These are all good things. Conversely, there's also evidence that low-carbohydrate diets can be pro-inflammatory in mice and increase the risk of cardiac fibrosis and kidney damage. There is insufficient information regarding the mechanisms responsible for these divergent outcomes which individuals may be at risk for adverse effects, or if any interventions could mitigate these risks. It seems reasonable to suggest that specific variables of the ketogenic diet combined with those of individuals undergoing dietary intervention all contribute to determining the beneficial or detrimental effects. Basically, they're saying that there are mixed data and that individual and diet-specific factors may account for heterogeneity in the data, which I think is totally reasonable. 
Now, for the study, they focused on a biomarker of cellular aging called senescence-associated beta-galactosidase, and compare mice on one of two different ketogenic diets with mice eating a normal, a standard chow mouse diet. I, I like the way he's interpreting that text into, I hope, language you can understand as a, a layperson. And so far, we're still in the mouse model, though. And you're, if you watch my videos, you're gonna you're gonna cringe because we don't work with mice. We work with humans, and there's a big leap from going to in general from mouse models to human use, especially with ketosis and the keto diet, because the brain size is so different and the metabolism is so different. But let's keep going. The two ketogenic diets were one based on Crisco, and one based on cocoa butter. Now, there's been a lot of talk about these mice being on a Crisco diet, which is high in, quote, seed oils. And that may be true, and that may be a concern for some people. But I do want to highlight that the authors did have another diet that was very low in omega-6 linoleic acid, only about 2 to 3% linoleic acid. So they were basically providing a control to say, look, the fatty acid profile may not be the mediating variable here, and that even mice on a higher saturated fat, lower unsaturated fat, diet can still exhibit the phenomena that they show in this paper. So I just want to highlight that because I think it was a masterful move by the researchers, I give them points for this, for using two different ketogenic diets with different fatty acid profiles. I think that was very good. Now, what did they find? They found that a biomarker of aging, senescence-associated beta-galactosidase, was increased in multiple organs in the mice on the ketogenic diets. Now, they didn't truly look at health span or lifespan which will become relevant in a moment. They also reported that an intermittent ketogenic diet, i.e. carb cycling, in the mice could reverse the increase in this biomarker of aging, leading some to conclude that an intermittent ketogenic diet might be preferable or safer for cellular aging than a ketogenic diet. I will say I think these data are interesting and not to be entirely discounted, but it's important to frame and caveat them. First, the authors note, as I read to you, that there are conflicting data. And if we're comparing apples to apples, or mice to mice, as it were, then the obvious question is, well, what are the outcome data for health span and lifespan in mice? And the answer is typically improved health span and lifespan in mice on ketogenic diets, as shown, for example, in Roberts et al. in cell metabolism, which you can give a read if you like, I'll link it below. So in this paper, they showed that mice put on a ketogenic diet had improvements in lifespan, significant improvements in lifespan, and were healthier at older age, had better cognitive function and better musculature and physical function. So when you are looking particularly at the mouse data and you say there are heterogeneity in the data, and in one paper you find changes in a biomarker, and the other you find changes in outcome data, and they conflict, I typically go with the outcome data. That's just me. Yeah, and he's being very kind. So basically, a prior study used a better outcome, which is how long the mice live, rather than focusing on a factor that predicts how long a, life, a mouse lives, maybe. So the, the, this is the intermediate or surrogate measure that we find in all sorts of conditions that are treated by doctors, including like the, the idea that you treat cholesterol like it's a disease. Cholesterol is not the disease, it's atherosclerosis. That, that's the disease we're trying to prevent, even though, it, so the keto diet has gotten a bad rap for raising the LDL cholesterol, when actually it may turn out not to be important at all. But we don't know that yet, but it's, it's the hypothesis that some scientists are working on right now. So looking at a biomarker and, and in the face of a study that sort of outdoes out it, and yet they didn't talk about it. And of course, the news didn't pick up on it because a, a reporter or the news, they're not going to go unless they interview perhaps a keto expert who knows about this other study. It's hard to give it context. Now, I'll also note there are some what I call oddities in the data. For example, if you look at the mouse data, the mice on a ketogenic diet, especially the Crisco diet, trended towards more weight gain which is interesting and not typically what you see on ketogenic diets, certainly not in humans. It also had a bump in triglycerides, again, opposite of what you typically see, especially in humans. So I find that odd and a bit concerning if we were to generalize these beyond this specific mouse 
response. Yeah, and, and Nick is being, again, kind of kind. We don't want to listen to the mouse models. They, they don't extrapolate well to humans for ketosis and for keto diets. And we've known that for a long time, which means, you know, that's an easy way to screen out a paper if you're going to be reading papers. Is, the, if it, is it in humans? No? Well, then let's just wait wait till the data gets up to human level. There's so much else to learn about. The, the observational data and studies correlation is not causation, and mice studies really don't influence what humans should do. It might lead to more studies that inform human studies, but I wouldn't take a mouse study and apply it to myself. That said, they do actually cite some human data. From a cohort which isn't otherwise published upon, they provide the clinical uh, trial registration, which I'll provide below, but there aren't more data published on these humans. But what they show is a change in the cytokine profile over time. So cytokines, specifically TNF-alpha, interleukin-1-beta, and interleukin-6, which are kind of pro-inflammatory mediators, were elevated in these humans from their data set. These were humans with obesity and overweight and or overweight. And they showed that particularly around six months, there was a jump in the levels of these cytokines, TNF-alpha, interleukin-1-beta, and interleukin-6, which I find interesting. It does conflict with prior data showing that ketogenic diets in humans tend to be anti-inflammatory, including in these cytokines. But they do provide some novel insight, as far as I'm aware, where there might be a time dependency where the spike in the cytokines may occur only after six months. So I find this interesting, and I think more research is needed on this. That said, these are cytokines that can be measured in anyone. So I had the thought before I made this video to, as soon as this paper came out, I'll get these checked in myself and report back on what my levels are because I've been on a ketogenic diet for over five years. So if there's supposed to be a, a spike in cytokines at six months, I should see them in myself. And here what you can see are my results. My cytokines, including the cytokines reported in this paper, TNF-alpha, interleukin-1-beta, interleukin-6, are all very normal and in the very healthy range. In fact, on two of the panels, they couldn't even measure my cytokine levels because they were below the threshold of detection. So do these data generalize to me? Are they relevant to me? Well, I would say if the mediating cytokines that they say are elevated in humans after six months aren't elevated in me after five years, then there's something different. My data are clearly divergent, to use their own word, from the data in the humans presented in this paper. Now, I won't generalize my data to you, and you can feel free to get a cytokine panel yourself. But again, <laughs> well, this, stay tuned to Nick Norwitz, soon to be Dr. Nick Norwitz, I hope, being able to debunk the overgeneralization that other people do by measuring his own, his own body measuring his own markers. He's going to probably do this many, many different times. And at least it shows you don't want to, you know, I remember the day when if someone said the Atkins died, you would be worried you would die tomorrow. You know, the, oh my gosh, you'd die. And so when I met Dr. Atkins and met people on the Atkins side, I thought, well, it can't occur to, to everyone. I mean, you know, because these people, of course, they might have been lying to me, but I had dinner with them and met people doing low carb diets and I'm seeing people live longer than, you know, dying tomorrow. So this kind of, you know, pendulum swinging or needle going all the way across. Well, the, the other to measure yourself is one way to say, well, it doesn't happen to everybody. And then also the long term, there are many things that are studied at six weeks, 12 weeks, even six months we're finding is not enough time to get the full adaptation to a keto diet. So if you're seeing changes and especially people who are saying there are bad changes and it's just in the short run, you know, unless it's something really serious, but a biomarker like this is not serious to make a keel over tomorrow. So it's kind of fear mongering about the, this terrible idea of eating fat and not eating carbs and, and using a biomarker. You know, I, I hope this will fade away over time to not just take pot shots at different diets, but I don't think it's going to fade away. It hasn't faded away over the last 20 years, even though there's a textbook of ketogenic diets now published last fall. So I, I like this video. But again, it just comes back to the idea that there's something odd going on here. 
Relevance can actually be checked or presumed by testing something in yourself. So you're free to do that. But for me, my cytokines are not elevated. So I see no reason from these mouse data primarily, which conflict with other mouse, mice data and the association in humans to generalize this to me, which is why I'm not gonna be adding potatoes to my diet anytime soon or doing cyclic keto when a ketogenic diet is therapeutic for me. You can do you. So in summary, what I'd say is these are interesting data. It's an interesting study. I don't wanna just discard it. I think that would be inappropriate, but it conflicts with prior data, including arguably stronger mouse data. And if you wanna get a cytokine panel to see if you can replicate the results, the elevated cytokines after six months on a ketogenic diet in yourself, or if your personal data conflict with the human data they present in this paper, which again is odd, I'd say, then go for it. You can kind of presume relevance in yourself that way. And I don't really think there are any reasons to freak out based on these data. The headlines are over sensationalized because they want clicks. Now, if you want to carb cycle, if that makes you feel safer, do whatever you want. I'm not opposed to it, especially if you're not using a ketogenic diet therapeutically, but those are my thoughts. I think it's an interesting paper. I wouldn't make much of it at this time. <laughs> Very polite. I would dismiss it. So watch out for Nick. Norwitz, subscribe to his channel. I even got one of his t-shirts, the Stay Curious shirts that he has. So maybe I'll wear it one of these times, but great to see a young scientist and hopefully become a physician, be able to use it in a clinical practice, at least clinical research, to be grounded in the individual variability that he is already acknowledging and then, but having the personal experience of doing what everyone said was bad and having a transformation, a, the reversing of a very serious medical condition in his own personal experience is, is going to stick with him despite a paper that says a intermediate marker has changed in the short run. I hope that's helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I'm putting out new material on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.